thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having invited me here uh, to Izmir. It's for me the fourth time I come to Turkey and uh, I really enjoy it. I would like to say that. So thank you very much for your hospitality. So I came uh, today uh, with a presentation and with three messages. I'm involved in the EOS building process. Uh, I started at the University of Vienna where I'm uh, on sabbatical now. I continued from the Technical University of Vienna where I'm based at the moment. Uh, from both universities, we are pushing the Austrian landscape into the European Open Science Cloud. We, it means it's a group of persons, we are all together working in this EOS building process. Now, um, the message I would like to, to send to you is that the EOS is not only a European Open Science Cloud, but it's also a European Inclusive Open Science Cloud. Um, why? Because uh, the European Open Science Cloud is not uh, a cloud, <laughs> that's the first thing. Open Science is not European, so uh, the message is to invite you to participate in this uh, process. How I will now show you this uh, couple of slides. The EOS is not a cloud made in Brussels, it was a decision of the Council. It was not the Commission who decided to create the cloud. It was the Council, it means the Member States. And if the Member States they decide to do something, they also should think about the financing of these uh, um, operations. Then they ask the Commission to do uh, the implementation. Um, so this is the first. It's not uh, made in Brussels. Second, it was launched in Vienna because of the uh, European presidency. At the, at the time it was uh, Austria. And it was strongly supported by the Bulgarian and the Romanian presidencies. So the vision is uh, to give uh, uh, an access to the 1.7 million researchers that are addressed by the European Open Science Cloud, to give these researchers a way to dock on uh, the uh, cloud, uh, cloud and all the services and all the data that are, they are producing. In order to bridge all, to bridge all the, uh, the huge fragmentation we realize. But this not, does not mean that uh, only the European researchers are invited. You are as an associate of a country, you too you are invited to participate. Um, then uh, there was a period where uh, it was decided to work along six lines of actions. They were concerning the future architecture, the future development and production and governance of data, and how the services would be implemented in order to uh, service this data. And then uh, um, the next line of action is on how to create access through the interfaces, but through other services, to these services and then uh, rules and governance. Nowadays, whole, the whole of Europe, uh, thousands of people, are working on the new governance model of this European Open Science Cloud. So everything you are, um, you will, uh, you will um, receive as information in the next months, it's all concerned about the new governance model that will govern this uh, uh, cloud. So the EOS is not a new dedicated infrastructure or software package. And it's not a project, it is a process. It's a process, and it's a process it is very dynamic. So the situation is evolving from day to day, um, and we are dealing with it. Um, I would like to um, Say, state that there is a link on uh, this uh, page. It's, uh, this link is then uh, linking, uh, pointing to this article. This article was published in July. And uh, this is an attempt on how to create some common terminologies on what the European Open Science Cloud is. So at the moment, the, we have the uh, governing board, which is the blue box on the top. The governing board is a, a, a strategic body. Then we have the executive board, which is an operative, operational body. Um, in the governing board, we have the representatives of the member states. And in the executive board, there are 17 experts 
are working on five working packages in order to create the future governance. And we also have the stakeholder forum and the working group. So the stakeholder forum, for example, is going to gather and to organize the US symposium next week in Budapest. On a regular basis, these people are gathering together and creating impulses for the uh, uh, executive board. And since uh, the beginning of this year, we also have the Secretariat. The Secretariat is a project for two and a half years time, with 11 partners there. Me, I'm a member of this, uh, uh, this Secretariat. And one of my tasks is to uh, work on the researchers' engagement. My other colleagues, they are working on other forms of stakeholder engagement. So, for example, on how the European Open Science Cloud should work with industry, on how the European Open Science Cloud should work with huge infrastructures yet existing in Europe, and so on and so on. Here are the links. There are a lot of projects supporting the use of the process. About around 50, 50 And uh, some of them are here. So Freya, Ocre, the EOS Cup project, the Ocreo project, which is an EOS uh, building project. So this uh, conference is uh, a, a, an important and relevant brick in uh, this effort. Then the Research Data Alliance Europe, then the Infra Central, EOS Cup, again, uh, and then the Secretary. Sec the Secretary Act is here to create uh, um, Support. It's a 360 degree support for the executive board. The main objectives are four so, co creation and funding opportunities. I will spend some more time on this because uh, we have an offer. Uh, then, to liaise, uh, to create a liaison platform, I would like to invite you to participate in this platform to send questions, to read the answers from other colleagues, and to liaise to the European Open Science Cloud. Then we have the stakeholder forum. If possible, participate in the stakeholder forum. You can do it by traveling there or via remote access, because it's streamed. Uh, and then the Secretariat is setting up an operational framework supporting the EOS governance. So it's servicing the board and the governing board. These are the partners, and me, I'm based at the Technical University, as I said. So these are the three entities working together at Technical University. It's the Faculty of Informatics, the Center for Research Data Management, and the library. We are based on the library. So why I'm sh showing this slide? Because it's a, a way on how to show how the different entities or organizational units in one university gathered together in order to push the idea of the development of the uh, European Open Science Cloud. And why is our library important in this? Because we think we are uh, uh, an, incub an incubator, an incubator for uh, uh, innovative uh, developments, and we actively support uh, the, uh, the user safety use implementation. What are we doing? We are recreating uh, an ambassador's program. It means uh, known researchers, we gather their community, we give them the information that they need in order to gather information from the community, what they need in order to approach the European Open Science Cloud. The second is uh, um, we, we try to give researchers a voice. How do we do it? In the, in, we are um, programming and proposing a series of workshops uh, one of these workshops, for example, is organized uh, by inviting the European University Association. You have heard the, this morning uh, the um, presentation uh, about, and asking them, what do you mean? Uh, what are your main topics and questions? And this is the question we are and I'm uh, proposing you now. What are your topics? What are your questions? Uh, what is relevant for Turkish researchers and infrastructures? to approach the European Science Cloud. Please let us know. Uh, you have the channels through the Edison platform. The message we are sending is clear. In our, in our vision, the European Open Science Cloud should support free uh, usage of services, 
free usage of data than were possible, so a lot of data, a lot of services. Um, and uh, our idea is uh, to make a comparison with Eduron. So we think, for example, that Eduron is well known, is ubiquitous, is transparent, it's a free point of use and extremely useful. This is the way the EOS should be. It has rule of rules of participation. We all know how it works and how it's possible to open. It has a system of architecture including security. It provides a specific microservice, microservice, and it deals with user data. And it has a governance. This is very simple at the first look. It's very complex if you, uh, if you imagine the work we are doing because we are uh, more than uh, uh, 28 countries. So we are creating this environment, but this is the comparison uh, we like uh, to use in order to explain on how it should work. So we are preparing our program, it will start in January. We will launch the Ambassadors program. We prepared events, they will also be launched in January. And then we also prepared videos interviews. So three of them are online in, on YouTube. I don't have the links now, but it does not matter. They will be, uh, will be uh, published at the EOS Secretariat um, uh, webpage. In the meantime, that we are working on the EOS Secretariat basis. There are some other projects, and I mentioned it. I would like to show you what uh, five other projects are doing right now, these days. These are the so-called 5B projects. They are covering, with their activities, the whole of Europe. Here is Brazil, we see. Also, Brazil is covered by these activities, by the yellow project, you see, uh, which is just synergy. Then, uh, uh, countries like Armenia, for example, here, uh, or Serbia, which are countries which are not uh, uh, officially in the European uh, Union, but as I mentioned, it's an it's a open science club. So what are these projects doing? They are collecting useful data about infrastructures. And uh, this data will uh, uh, then be analyzed till the end of this year. And the third, first report is expected uh, in February. This report will then be sent to the Secretariat. The Secretariat will then uh, use this data and combine this data with the results of its own surveys, the events, uh, the results of the events I was mentioning, and then give this information, forward this information to the stakeholders and to the uh, executive board. And the working groups of the executive board will then be able to um, propose some definitions, some ideas, or they will come back with further questions. So my last uh, part of this presentation is concerning the co-creation process. We are asking stakeholders to participate. Stakeholders, and you are stakeholders, are asked if it's possible to create events like this, or to create studies, produce analysis, and for, uh, in order to do so, it's possible to apply, can apply uh, for money and uh, for funding. You can do it uh, by an individual can do it, a group can do it, an institution can do it. You can also do it uh, with some other institutions, uh, you in Turkey and institutions from other countries like Spain, for example. And it's very easy. So there is a page. The page is uh, you have the link. It's pointing at this page. There are uh, three possibilities. Two of them are really interesting. The first one are the so-called open calls. The Secretariat is creating calls where it's written we need support for the X activity or activity Y, whatever. You can answer it and propose yourself. The second possibility, it's easier, you have the idea and you propose it. And within a time lapse of five up to six weeks, you will get the answer if it's possible to be funded in this uh, issue. So how can Turkish institutions support the use building process? You can organize workshops, know how to transfer the use building process, so ask us. Your institution can advise research institutions 
and founders to get further engaged in the EU's freedom processes. So you have to be back. But this is not the only fund on this process. You have all the industrial corporations. You have uh, uh, NGOs that can be involved in this uh, process as funders, as corporation funders, um, or a town. Uh, um. So ask them and participate. And your institution can also contribute to the creation and development of the right environment for common terminologies in this global process. You can identify priority topics, your priority topics. Uh, you can share stakeholder contacts. You put uh, the players in contact with relevant initiatives and projects. You promote participation to initiatives. And uh, you can foster the creation of working groups addressing collective suggestions. These are the stakeholders you can address, which are your researchers, your research support, so researcher and research support, national digital infrastructures, national uh, funding projects, research and academia organization, policy makers and your institution. What can be funded is written in a very a simple way on the on the web page. Participate in the Vision platform and as mentioned next week we will have the symposium of the stakeholders. So I thank you very much for your attention.